In this week's video, we're going to be showing you how this book can make teaching chemistry and learning chemistry in your homeschooling environment infinitely more fun for you and your kids. So to get started, we're going to talk... Instead of telling them about the book, we should just show them. I think that's a great idea. At its core, this is a chemistry book disguised as a book of potions designed to help you in whatever wizarding world you inhabit. And it just so happens that in the woods behind our house, we are occasionally bothered by a terrifying werewolf. So with our book of potions, we can find the appropriate recipe to turn this terrifying beast back into its human form. And with a little preparation and some luck, we can create our monster mist rocks that will help us if we ever find ourselves in such a predicament. It's here. What are we gonna do? It's time for some science. <laughs> that was so ludicrous. Keep in mind, the budget for our weekly videos is about 87 cents. But to get back to the book, the Wizard's Workshop is 88 pages of chemistry experiments disguised as recipes for spells and potions, all meant to encourage interactive play. If you have trouble incorporating chemistry topics for your young learners into your homeschooling curriculum, whether it is due to you not feeling like you have an adequate science background, or you're just concerned that teaching science is boring and your kids will be disinterested, then this book can most definitely help you out. Let's take a closer look. In the table of contents, you'll see there are 20 different experiments, or potions, that you can make. Looking more closely at the exploding fog fluid, you'll see the ingredients needed are dragon acid, two worm pus, dragon blood, and crumb of alligator skin. That sounds disgusting. But with further inspection, you'll see that these ingredients, of course, are the wizardry equivalent to common household items such as hydrogen peroxide and packets of yeast. And you can see how this is the wizardry version of the common muggle experiment, elephant toothpaste. In fact, this is us doing that experiment a few months ago inside of our Halloween pumpkins. And trust me, the effort to enjoyment ratio on this experiment is... Going through the table of contents in the book, I actually realized we had done a few of these experiments already on our channel. For example, little did we know we had already made a love potion, an expanding potion, and a wishing potion. If I had known then that was a wishing potion, I would have asked for a million YouTube subscribers. Instead, I have to do it the hard way and ask people to subscribe at every video. I would recommend this book over any of the chemistry experiments we have done in the past just based on the value proposition alone. The reason being, almost all of the ingredients required for the spells are common household supplies, and the few that are a little bit more tricky to find, such as potassium nitrate, I mean corpse dust, the book does a very good job of telling you where you can go find it, and they're usually located at your local hardware stores. For example, potassium nitrate is just some simple stump remover that you can find anywhere. But the point is, most of the ingredients for the book are in your house already. You don't have to spend additional money, and you can repeat the experiments as many times as you want. Unlike the chemistry kids, oftentimes when you run out of the chemicals that come with the kit, you're kind of done. It doesn't mean it was a bad kit, it just doesn't have the reusability, perhaps, of the experiments of this group or the other physics kits that we recommend. The last two things about this book I want to talk about deal with why I think doing things like this are incredibly important to your homeschooling environment, and also my thoughts on whether you should be concerned about incorporating things that deal with wizards and witchcraft into your homeschooling curriculum. But before that, let's talk about the price of the book. You can get this book in two ways. The actual book itself, which runs for about $15 on Amazon, but you can also get it for a couple of bucks on their Kindle app, and while that will save you a lot of money, it might not be what you want to do as you're going to be using this book in the kitchen, cooking, and it will be real easy to get your Kindle or tablet wet, whereas with the paperback you don't really have to worry about it. The other thing about the paperback is my daughter loves Harry Potter and all things wizardry, and she actually takes this book around with her everywhere. So in addition to doing science, she is definitely getting her reading credits in for the day as well. And that's a little party bonus. Okay, back to why I think doing stuff like this is incredibly important. Public schools obviously do a lot of things great when it comes to education. And one of those positives is providing a broad range of topics for their curriculum. As a homeschooling parent, it can be pretty easy to gloss over topics that we don't feel terribly comfortable teaching. Remind me what a past participle is again? Because you might feel some pressure that in order to teach a subject, to feel like it was a success, your child needs to be proficient in that subject. And how do you get your child proficient if you yourself don't feel confident in the subject to begin with? I would argue that especially at the age range of my kids, it's less about proficiency and more about just exposure. 
Don't ignore instructing your kids science because you don't feel confident that you're going to be able to create the next Elon Musk. Just expose them to science and the different topics, and if they like it, their passion will push them to become proficient on their own. And if you don't feel comfortable teaching or exposing your kids to science, it's books like this that make it really easy. And lastly, let's talk about wizards, witchcrafts, and all things magic. Some parents are rightfully hesitant to incorporate some subject matter that has these topics in it because they feel it might steer their child down a path they don't want them to go. But like always, with good communication, you're going to see that this book doesn't have any topics that you're going to have to worry about if that is something that concerns you. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and don't forget to subscribe. Links for more information to the book or to purchase it will be down below in the description. Have a great day, everybody. And we'll see you next week.